Hi everyone, and welcome to the final episode in this 8-bit Minecraft computer series. In today's design episode, we're going to look at the processor instruction set and see how we can build the control signals for our data path. Up to this point, we've not discussed the instructions our processor will have. In a future series, I'll discuss how we design instruction sets from scratch, which is a highly complex topic, often with a lot of opinion and very little empirical evidence. For this series, we're going to pick an instruction set that we can be confident will work. This will have operations for basic arithmetic, add, sub, loading constant values, LDAC, LDBC, copying the PC, the program counter, into the A register, LDAP, loading values for memory, LDAM, LDBM, LDAI, and LDBI, storing values into memory, STAM and STAI, branching, BR, BRB, BRZ, and BRN, and prefixing the operand register, prefix. The memory instructions allow us to do ordinary load store, where the A or B registers are used as the address. They also allow us to do indexed load store, where we add an offset to the address in the A or B register. We need to work out which instructions will set which control signals. To do this, we can use a simple table in Excel. This will also act as the lowest level specification of our instruction set, good enough for this simple machine. Our spreadsheet lists the instruction numbers and their mnemonics. We then have a column for each control signal. We put a 1 in the column if the corresponding instruction sets that control signal. On the right hand side, we calculate the 2-bit control signals for the AU input selector multiplexers. I've greyed out the A and B reg read columns because they're not actually used by the AU input selectors, since the A and B reg values are on the zero index input of the multiplexers. To produce our control path, we now just need to OR together all of the decoded instruction signals in each column. And that's it, we've now got a complete working processor. Let's write some simple programs, load them into the memory, and see what happens. Wow, we've completed our processor design. Along the way, we've looked at building logic gates from transistors, using logic to represent numbers with two's complement, and numbers to represent information about the world. We've seen how logic gates can be used to build combinational circuits like adders, as well as sequential circuits like memory latches and flip-flops. We've learned about clock edges, decoders, multiplexers, demultiplexers, the processor's data path, execution phases, and lastly, the control path. That's a lot for just 11 videos. Don't miss tonight's live stream where we'll finish building the processor and program it with some of our examples. Thank you very much for watching this series. If you liked it, please do like the videos and subscribe to my channel for new content coming soon. In future series, we'll be looking at instruction set design and how we can build this processor on real hardware using something called FPGAs. Keep well in these challenging times and I'll see you all again soon.